Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is End Time Church. Boy, that background is booming. Let it's me change 80s. that. <laughs> that's some serious. We're okay. That's better. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Uh, that's Pastor Anderson. That's Apostle Paul. I'm Chris Manti. Uh, welcome, uh, one and all, to the End Time Church. Uh, this is where we meet and get together and fellowship and worship God as a body together from all over the world. Right? Yeah. It's amazing. Even us three here, we're many, many miles separate us right now. And folks watching us on YouTube and at the endtime.church uh, live page, um, again, from everywhere. So, so we so appreciate you. We welcome you. You be virtual everythings. Uh, even though we're getting closer to being able to hug each other in person, right? Getting there. Pretty cool. And you can hug on Pastor Anderson real hard, like, because his glasses can bend. They're bendy glasses. <laughs> Gumby ones. Uh, guys, you know, kid-proof, hopefully, a dog-proof. We'll see. That's, that's the hope. Yeah, you're going to get it tested out here, I think, pretty soon. Uh, hey, Isaac, checking in from YouTube. Bless you. Uh, oh, my Oh my God, dude. Look at Isaac's testimony. This guy, we've got to have him on. He says, God bless him, former Jehovah Witness, also Seventh-day Adventist and Islam. Got a number of things there. Isaac has been through it. Man. Bless you, Gene. Hello, sister. Uh, and, of course, if you want to chat and get chatted uh, with and to and um, really participate, uh, we suggest going to the endtime.church website uh, or on your mobile device. It works great on your phone or tablet um, as well. And speaking of that, make sure you get our app. It's really cool. It works good. Uh, we're all on it. Everyone you see here, uh, most folks that are chatting away is um, our users as well, completely free. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and get your version now. You don't even need that, though. You can just do it from your computer. Just open your browser like you're watching now and get the app. You just type in app.endtime.church. It'll take you automatic to where your device uh, can use it. And done. And uh, and please utilize it because it has a lot of awesome things about it. Like Apostle Paul um, is, for example, gets together every Friday night um, for prayer. That's important, is it not? Well, that's key. It's critical. Um, should be the first thing we do, right? I mean, like for everything, never stop. Anyway, get the app, participate, do this stuff. Uh, we do ask that you take a look at the page that you're on. If you're on the Anton Church site, you're going to see a little prayer uh, button next to the chat. Fill that out. It's a little form. Contact us. Whatever's on your mind, whatever you've got going on, whether it's a prayer request or whatever else, use that form. We will get back with you. We promise. Um, the playlist button has all uh, previous messages that we've had here for past several weeks and months. So check that out. And then there's a button at the top of your screen that says share. Please use it because... Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. If if nothing else, I'm gonna everyone who watches tonight is gonna remember. Sharing is caring, and then uh, the give now button, which we do depend on your tithes and offerings. And the only thing we mention about that is Chris Anderson one day just put it the best way possible, which is you just ask the Lord how much He wants you to give tonight, and then do that. Nope. The end. That's it. That's it. No pledge drives here. That's just just be obedient. Uh, because if you think this is worthwhile, if you think this is of the Lord, then support it. That's it. That's what yes. I do. We got a brother here, uh, a brother. I can't pronounce your first name. The last name is Joseph from Philippines, checking in on YouTube. Welcome. It's uh, awesome to have you with us tonight. Um, we got Susanna from Ireland checking in. Yay. Welcome, Susanna. It's awesome to have you here with us. People from all over the world. Uh, we have people that are here from Australia that come. Uh, they might be a little late getting in today. That's all good. Time differences and all. They're actually here tomorrow. We got England, we got Canada. Even what else is there? Countries in uh, different parts of the U.S. I call it countries sometimes. It's kind of funny. Lord, deliver Antarctica to our. Well, that's fine. That's probably. A, I mean, we know nothing's impossible with God, but you actually have to someone has to live there. That's right. Who's going to get with us? Cares, right. But. Yeah, we'll take it. Uh, and it's a tremendous opportunity to use this technology. Like I said yesterday, I mean, I'm watching. Obviously, we all are com concerned about Israel right now. Um, we're watching things, you know, closely as we should. And um, praise God for technology. 
the Iron Dome system. I mean, it's like, can't even make this stuff up. Um, it's like science fiction watching these, look at the pictures and the, and the videos. I mean, I'm looking like we have a friend, obviously Pastor Pakhtar there in Ashdod. He's sending these crazy videos right from his porch. And, uh, it's not, um, normal, right? For us, for sure. Um, but again, you know, God will use certainly these things to save his people, to, to work, uh, great things and to, um, establish his people where he wants them and to connect them and all that stuff. So don't be, you know, afraid to use technology for sure. Obviously the, um, the enemy has invested in that as well, but we can't cede the, the ground to him, right? Okay. We can redeem the technology. Redeem the, the time and, and the tech. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Praise God. What else do we want to say? Um, oh, we've got a, speaking of get togethers, if you want to get together in person, you can do that. Uh, there's a, um, an event, uh, set up right at, again, the site and the app. We can send a link to it as well. If you want to come out to Pastor Randy's church, uh, which is my pastor, uh, in the Northeastern United States, July 9th through 11th, we're going to make it available. So whoever wants to show up can show up. We're going to hang out, make a weekend out of it. Come to my house if you want. Uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, it'll be awesome if, if we can do that. We will uh, accommodate you. So, and I mean that mostly, but there's a hotel nearby if we have, you know, actually folks coming who need more room than a room. Uh, there's a hotel there. But point is, it's uh, again totally free. You just need to tell us you're coming if you would, to, so we know what to expect and for food and stuff like that. Okay, uh, and we're working on a newsletter, uh, Pastor Chris. Why don't you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, so we're working on a newsletter in, in conjunction with a couple of people here at the church. Um, Michael Palmer is going to be contributing to it. Sister Adriana is going to be contributing to it. Pastor Manti, myself. Um, we are putting this together, and by no means is it limited to the four of us. So if anybody has uh, anything that Lord put on your heart that maybe you want to share on on there, you know, a little brief article or something like that. Hey, shoot us an email, send it to Pastor Manti, send it to myself. You know, we would love to take a look at that and put it into the newsletter. Uh, right now it's a monthly newsletter and we are hoping to have the first one ready to go by the first of June. Uh, we still got some, some things we're working out and on the back end, but we got what, two weeks. So, you know, I don't know why it can't get done in two weeks, but if you are interested in that, if you want to be a part of that newsletter, um, Pastor Manti, uh, let us know how they can do that. Well, you can just let me know. You can let us know. Send us an email if you like. Uh, first of all, if you want to receive it, it's easy. You can just oh, yeah. go to our website and at the bottom of every page, put in your email address and then you automatically get them. Uh, but if you wanted to contribute to it, you can just shoot us an email, uh, Christopher at endtime.church. How do we have you in there? Pastor Anderson at endtime.church uh, or at endtime.church. Just Anderson. You just yeah. need, it's like salute the man. Just Mr. Anderson. Anderson, call him up. Anderson is there. Um, Neo at uh, <laughs> in time. That's cool. That's not you mentioned. I should I should put that in there so it works. Uh, but yeah, reach out to us. That's it. That's it. Or on the app or whatever. Uh, we'll be happy to include anything you're led to, you know, to provide uh, for a newsletter for folks. Yeah. Um, and that is cost nothing. Another right, another free option yeah. for you. Ooh, a lot of freebie stuff. A lot of churches have freebies, but there's always some sort of catch at the end of it. And there's no catch here, so it's free. We're just you know, get some encouragement. Get some, we're, we're sharing some different prayers. We're sharing all kinds of different things that can encourage you in your walk with Christ uh, to help yeah. disciple you, to grow you, and spiritually mature you. So we're excited about that, about the possibilities that it holds, and um, really looking forward to see how God uses that to advance his kingdom. Amen. Amen, brother. I am too. Um, right. That's it. Um, my uh, announcements are done, so I'm good to go. Uh, One possibly. more before I, before go. I jump over. Go, um, go, baby. Two weeks ago, before I went on vacation, I mentioned oh, about right. a, uh, a GoFundMe uh, that we put together for uh, two pastors that I'm personally working with, with Boot Camp Ministries. One of them out of India. I've worked with him for three years. Uh, he's an evangelist. He goes all over India and preaches the gospel in some very hostile areas. Uh, but he also runs an orphanage. He's, he's networked with a bunch of other pastors uh, in India. Um, incredible man of God. He, he was in a, he's in a great need for uh, financial provision to help with food to take care of these pastors. Um, and there's another minister, a pastor, of, a friend of mine in in Kenya, and uh, called Pastor Al. But he 
is running an orphanage. He has four different churches, and the orphanage is right now, because of COVID-19, his church is not able to provide finances to, to buy food for these 30 orphans he has. And so they're in a dire need. But I put a link out there uh, to GoFundMe, and uh, so far we're about a quarter of the way to goal. So I want to thank uh, all those at End Time Church who have given so far. Um, you know, I know that both those ministries are going to be very blessed by the generosity of, of you folks right here. Uh, this is going to touch lives. It's changing lives. Uh, and I just want to say thank you from, from myself uh, and from the pastor friends of mine. Um, thank you. Um, and I can still provide, provide a link in the chat or anything last week, but I'll do that uh, after yeah. today. So if you still want to give, it's there. If you miss it there, you can always go onto the app in the community page. I have it posted there too. So, Awesome. Yeah, please do, brother. Uh, as soon as uh, we're done praising God, Eric, you go ahead and post that in the in the chat and the website and also uh, here through the YouTube channels. If you're, Can you see that? Are you able to send a message to them through here? Or I can just do that too. I can Whatever. That. Yeah, I can send it through here. No problem. Cool, cool. Yeah, do that, man. Uh, great. All right. Praise God. We love doing this with you together. So let's praise God together. Uh, and then we'll get to a very different kind of message here, but, uh, so we'll be back for prayer in just a minute. Apostle Paul and uh, Mr. Anderson, guitar is ready. We're ready to receive it. Armed and there ready. it is. Now, ten, now be honest. Do you have a name for the guitar? You know, I, I don't, I used to, for my electric guitar, it was a V, uh, uh-huh. it's black, like half a V, got skull knobs, looks really cool, but I don't even remember what it is, because whatever, but not oh. for this. Oh, seems like we ought to have a pole or something. Yeah, Name what is it called for now? Woody? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, let's leave that for later. All right, praise God, guys. Uh, let's, let's, let's praise God, and we'll be let's back in just a minute. All right. So it's kind of been a very unusual week in regarding to preparing for worship. You know, I have had, you know, time since I've been off on vacation. Today's my first day back to work to work on some songs and stuff. And I had a stack of songs I was working on. I didn't know what the message was tonight. And uh, typically I don't ask. Well, actually, I never asked what the what message is. I just kind of go with it. But there are three songs that really kind of stuck out to me that we're going to play tonight. I'm trying to Bruce do some to uh, about two to three songs a night. So the first one we're going to do tonight is Waymaker. I think a lot of us know that song. So I, I didn't make any slides. I didn't put the lyrics anywhere. You know, if you know these songs, sing them. If you don't know them, just worship. Then the second song we're going to do is Take Heart. Uh, I've played this before. Um, and then the last song we're going to do is What a Beautiful Name. And, um, you know, I, I think really these three songs really go towards speaking to what Pastor Manti is going to be talking about regarding his personal testimony that the Lord Jesus Christ is a way maker. That when we follow the real Jesus, he makes a way. And even though we might be in a place in our lives where it seems our world has fallen apart, where we're consumed with fears, you know, we are going through just darkness of night, that the Lord Jesus Christ is a light in the darkness and that he casts out darkness, he casts out fear. And that we can take heart, that all of our heartache and pain, he can heal, that all of our failures and fears, his love overcomes, that all of our troubles and tears, God gives us hope, that all of our burden and shame of what we've done, that the Lord Jesus Christ is our freedom. And then the last song is, what a beautiful name. And as we get to that point, you know, these songs lead to that triumphant declaration that the name of Jesus Christ is powerful. That it is, that is the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. That it is the name of our Lord and Savior and that it has conquered all sin, all death, all hell. It has conquered those things in the name of Jesus. We ourselves become more than conquerors. And it indeed is a powerful, powerful name. So wherever you're at tonight, whatever you're doing, I know some people listen as we as they walk to work or go to work. Some people are already at home, you know, settled in for the night. So whatever you're doing, let's just take the next 10, 15 minutes and let's worship. Because that's what we are created to do, is to worship the Lord Jesus Christ.
you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are He. Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't feel it, you're working, and even when I don't see it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Lord Jesus. We thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that you are the way maker, Lord. That when there seems to be no way, Lord, you created one. Lord, when the Israelites were faced with the Red Sea, God, and there was no way possible, with a blast of your nostrils, Lord, you created a way. We thank you, God, for that. Lord, I ask tonight, God, that no matter what the people here tonight are dealing with, God, if the way seems hopeless, God, if the way seems shut, we ask you, Father, to make a way. We thank you, Jesus, that you open doors that no man can shut, and you shut doors that no man can open. We thank you, God, that you are the way maker, and we bless you tonight, God. We lift you up, Jesus. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you tonight, God. We bless you tonight, Father. We worship you. 
that there is none other worthy of worship, God, none other worthy of praise than you, Jesus. We lift you up, God. It's brighter than the sun, still tonight. Cast no shadow, there is hope. Should oceans rise and mountains fall, never fail. So take heart, let his love lead us through.
Jesus, that you have overcome. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. There is none worthy beyond you, Father. There is none deserving of all of our praise and worship than you, Jesus. We lift you up today. May our worship be a sweet incense unto you, Father. with God the Lord most high your hidden glory and creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus you brought Sin was great, your love was greater. And what can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you. Veil torn before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. You are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of 
Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a powerful name it is. Bless you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. For he is good. And his mass is endure forever. Happy Pentecost week. We are in this week where we are celebrating the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are celebrating the person of God, the Holy Spirit. So we, I pray that you have uh, time with Him. I pray that we have an encounter with not his, just His power, but His uh Person, his personality, his character. And then we're going to pray through uh, Psalms 100. We want to pray through Psalms 100 and I'll go ahead and read it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your outpouring. Thank you for your presence. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's what Pastor... Anderson just led us to do. O ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. That's what we just did. Praise God. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. Praise God. And not we ourselves. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. And be thankful unto him. And bless his name. For the Lord is good. Praise God. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth. To all generations. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We, we just come before you. So much is going on. So much is going on in the earth today. So much is going on. So much confusion. So much disorder. So much sound. So much voices going on in Africa. Going on in the Middle East. Going on in South Central America. Going on in uh, North America. Going on in in the islands, going on in uh, uh, Congo, uh, Mozambique, um, going on in uh, Northern Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, going on all over the earth, going on in the seas. But yeah, you are in control. Hallelujah. Psalms 100. You are our God and you are uh, in control. So we come before the God of order and the God of authority, and the God of power, and the God of love, that we will grow and abound in the things as being your ecclesia, as being your government, as being your cold out ones. So you shall release forth the, the, the mystery. We speak forth the mystery of the church, the mystery of the bride of Christ, whose we are, who we are right now, in all the chaos going on around the earth, Lord. Father, we pray that your hand of grace, your hand of mercy shall be upon the enemies of the church, the enemies of the ecclesia, the enemies of your called out ones, and your hand shall be upon the enemies of Israel. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. So we speak forth, let there be peace, hallelujah, over Jerusalem. The peace, you say, you've set watchmen upon Jerusalem, that we will never hold our peace until it is made a city you praise. For until the church is here on the earth, we will stand forth and raise up our intercession for Jerusalem, for Israel, and for the enemies of Israel, because Jesus came to seek and save all. So we release forth your saving power. We speak forth um, secret missions, secret missionaries to break into this chaos between Gaza and, and Israel, between Gaza, the Palestine, and Jerusalem, and, and the Jews, the Arab Jews, and, and all what is we speak forth as we are celebrating the Pentecost. You say you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And the context of that, that we shall be witnesses. You witness better in darkness. When there's a lot of darkness, that's when people meet you. I met you in my darkness when I was suicidal, when I was going to commit suicide. That is when I met you. So we speak light of evangelism, light of missions right now in this darkness in the world, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Congo, Father God, in in Mozambique, we speak the light of Jesus, the missions of Yeshua, the ecclesia of Christ to prevail in these last days. We rejoice in the light, Jesus, that he will prevail in the last days. Isaiah 60, gross darkness shall come, but the light of Yeshua shall prevail and it shall shine even brighter. So we speak peace, the shalom, rest of God over the nations. The shalom rest of God over people groups. The shalom rest of God over families. The shalom rest of God over the prodigal sons and daughters. The shalom rest of God over families and marriages. The shalom rest of God even in the Middle East. For there is nothing impossible with our God. We thank you. Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you for Pastor Mante, oh God, and, and just the vessel as a an, um, seasoned teacher of the end times, Lord. We just ask of you that you continue to break through him, Lord. That you use his words as, a, as an armor, Father God, as this is reaching the whole world, the whole nations, that God will break through even every stronghold in the earth today. So we speak a blessing over Pastor Mante, oh Mantai, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Shalom, blessings. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Love you, Apostle Paul. Right. <clears throat> All right, friends, I thank you for uh, sticking with us here. I know we actually we have a couple new people joining us, so, so thankful to the Lord for that. And so let's get to it. Um, this is... A little different. Um, it's a lot different, actually, than what uh, I usually would share. And if the button works, there we are. All right. Um, most of you probably haven't heard this uh, account. I'm pretty sure most of you have no clue what this is about. Um Today is a significant day in my walk with God and um, in my life in general. And it happens to be a 20-year anniversary tonight of uh, what I know now to be leaving a Christian cult. And yes, it is a um, still painful when I'm trying to recall the details and writing it out. I'm like, boy, it still hurts. Um, but it's necessary. And it's, again, not to, for any other reason other than, like we're told in the scriptures, to your, basically your, your witness, your, um, past is that your testimony is your help to the next man or woman, uh, that God would minister to through you. So always be ready to give that, um, to help others. So that's my goal in this, to help you, to help whomever this applies to both tonight uh, and going forward. If somebody stumbles upon this or if someone were to come seeking uh, counsel, 
for these types of things, I um, hope I can um, at least be a, a shoulder that understands. All right. Um, so what happened? <laughs> Basically, these dates are very important. There are two sets of uh, dates 20 years ago, uh, May 5th through 17th, and then September 5th through 17th in the years 2000, and then again in 2001. Um, again, what I understand now is uh, I followed cultic teachings, and I moved 3,000 miles away from my home um, to live with someone who I barely knew <laughs> and almost destroyed my marriage or my pending marriage um, and pretty much every relationship that I had built, my career, you know, work-wise. It's a very tenuous time. Um, before I proceed here, so I'm wearing a shirt that I've never worn before, and it's the color I usually don't wear. Um, it's my father-in-law's. Today actually is his, uh, it's been four weeks since he went home to the Lord. And so that's kind of the theme here. And in fact, ma the major, um, people you'll be hearing about tonight are also no longer with us and they are home with the Lord. At least I know one of them is with the Lord. Um, but anyway, so I don't know what that means exactly. Here's what it was. What, what cult are we talking about? It's called the Shepherd's Chapel. Shepherd's Chapel. Um, when you say it's a satellite church, well, that means something different now, but Back when, you know, the mid-90s, uh, when all this was happening, uh, was this was the way to get out. The Internet was very new. Uh, and to wait to broadcast your church out to the world wasn't anti-church or Zoom, but it was satellite communication. You had to own your own satellite dish and broadcast from it and pay to uh, bounce it off a satellite up in, up in the atmosphere. And so that's how I found this um, church. And the pastor's name was Arnold Murray. He, again, is not with us any longer, but his children have taken over. Um, how did I find it? Um, I was a frequent a frequenter of Christian message boards. Um, if you know what those are, if you're an old uh, Internet person, not old, <laughs> have been involved with it for an now 20, 25 years, uh, this was basically the first type of social media. Um, it was uh, interaction. It was a way to, um, to put ideas or, or um, just writings or links to other things and just have discussions with like-minded folks. So uh, I found Christian message boards, and there were a couple of decent ones. And um, the end times, as Paul said, for whatever reason, the Lord called me to, to study those things. And so um, I would, you know, talk to other Christians about it. And sometimes it was really good and sometimes it wasn't. And uh, you had some really wacky out there ideas. Um, but the good part about it to me was I actually found someone that I had just come out of the um, or was questioning the pre-tribulation um, theory that uh, you know, the rapture would come get us, Jesus could return at any moment, and I had read all every book on the subject. You all know this part of my story, um, and so I just took it as 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 a fact because these smart guys wrote books and had all these scriptures and details, and I guess they're right. But um, you know, Holy Spirit teaching me. Uh, that that was not correct. Anyway, so this this particular man was a post-trib teacher. He's the first um, one I had ever heard. And so I was referred to their materials by one man in particular uh, who had all the, you know, all the the info about this church called the Shepherd's Chapel, and they're awesome, and they're all about the, you know, there's no preacher rapture, and we're going to be here, and 
you know, all this stuff that I was hearing in the spirit. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there was, they had materials. They had a, a very, very primitive uh, website, but mostly their materials were audio tapes, cassettes. <laughs> I'm dating probably myself just saying that, but um, all their messages were, you know, on little white cassette tapes. And so you ordered those and that's how you got your info if you didn't have the satellite. Um, but I found them on TV as well. Um, I would say I got, you know, started watching and sucked into the whole program in 1997. Um, and so not only was there the Christian message boards generically, and some of them just got really boring and ugly because once you start talking about rapture things or end time stuff, it gets, it just devolves, you know, um, as you probably can understand. And now you move to the official boards like Shepherd's Chapel had their own students who created their own message boards. So you hung out at those. And if this sounds familiar to what's happening with QAnon, you're right. Uh, so you're, you're, you're in a um, echo chamber. You're, you're hearing, you're getting validated and you recycle that into the same boards and you trust the board. So therefore the information on the board must be correct. Yada, yada. Uh, so anyway, I just believe the rest of it by default. Um, since he was right about the rapture thing, I'm like, all right, Lord, you sent me to this guy. Must be true. So um, between 1998 and 2000, I just went for it. I took the plunge. And what I mean by that was 1998, I flew myself uh, alone to Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, they had a Passover conference. They, uh, they, the, uh, one of the again the unique things about this church was they celebrate. They don't do Easter. Um, the fact they look very negatively on the whole practice, and and again I related to that. I thought you know I, this is right on. You know I just thought this independently. You know before, so I again felt like this is the Lord. Uh, flew myself out to Kansas City for their Passover conference. I didn't know anybody. I just walked around. It was kind of a cool adventure time. Um, I had just met uh, the year before the woman who would become my wife. And so we were, you know, dating and serious, but she was like, oh, okay, bye. Uh, so I went to Kansas City for a couple of days, and then I was really, really into it now. I was really, really into it now. Really into it. Uh, and then so the next year, I made plans, took time off of work. Um, and now by this time, I had a, a quote-unquote real job, okay, um, at uh, Nextel, which became Sprint Communications, you know, that company. Um, they were just starting out, so it was a cool place to work. Anyways, so um, I took my first vacation from there to go fly out to Idaho, because this new friend that I met on these message boards or referred me uh, to these separate chapel folks um, just kept corresponding with me. He was a little older than me. It wasn't weird like that. Okay, he was he had children and um, I was uh, not with his wife anymore, but, you know, he's lived with his mom and stuff like that. It was not the most normal thing, I guess, but it wasn't too weird. Um and we just got along great, and he I, he kind of took me under his wing and started educating me as as far as he was concerned, you know. Um, and I accepted it. I I thought it was great. Um, so let's go meet him. He's like, you got to come out and hang out and meet me, you know, and see where where I live and the land of God and all this stuff. So I did. Um, not only did we hang out at his house, um, we got in his RV and drove all the way down to. Gravit, Arkansas. Gravit is where um, Shepherd's Chapel is, the b physical building. They uh, they meet in a, an old roller rink, um, refurbished as a church. And um, anyway, we drove all the way down. The RV broke down at times. It was extremely challenging, to be honest with you. Uh, I was kind of freaked out and uh, like, what am I doing here? We finally got there. They let us um, camp in their parking lot for a couple of days. I went to the service on the Sunday that we were there. Thankfully, there was one that Sunday because they actually do it every other week. 
Um, but went to the Sunday service, uh, met Pastor Murray, and um, again, was just very encouraged. They had a little store, of course, with all the tapes, right? All the merchandise, and um, everyone was very nice, and, you know, it was a great family atmosphere, and you kind of get into that, don't you? We, um, the feeling of belonging. And, um, I mean, we can still appreciate that's not a negative thing. Cle- clearly, that's why you're here, probably. At ETC, because of that same type of thing. Um, but that by itself usually isn't everything, right? Got to have the truth of God's word going on here. Um, anyway, so I kept going in deeper. Uh, the plunge kept happening. And in 2000, um, in um, end of March, I flew out to their Passover 2000 conference. In, now this was in Branson, Missouri. Um, and, uh, we did, and not only it was me, I took friends and my brother, my flesh and blood brother, and I met the friend from Idaho. He came out there and so it was like a little group now we had, and this was fun. And I got baptized that it was around April 1st, um, 2000, if memory serves, and so that was my baptismal date, and it was by this culty preacher um, from Shepherd's Chapel uh, in the hotel pool. Within a month of that date, again, totally into it now. You guys know, if you know how I operate with working stuff, um, I was just totally had the tunnel vision. All right, this is like, i got to absorb all this. i got to learn it all. I've got to. Test it all, sure, but there's so much different, unique stuff there. I've got to really get into it. Within a month of that Passover um, conference, um, I was convinced that I had to move to Idaho to live and to start a ministry. So I left my fiance at the time. I just proposed to Ashley. And... Uh, I left her back in New Jersey with her poor mother um, because she wouldn't come with me. She says, this is crazy. You know, go. I'm not going. Um, so I left her. I took my brother and two other friends from New Jersey where we lived, and I got my car, and we left. And as well as that career that I told you about it at uh, Nextel, um, all that was gone. I quit. I packed the bag, literally packed the trunk as far as it would go, picked up the friend and left. I remember like it was yesterday. Like it was yesterday. And so about two days later, we reached our destination in Northern Idaho. We arrived May 5th, 2000. Silver lining in that is, yes, my fiance actually followed me out. Um four months later in August. Thank God. And as far as relationship with her goes, those were certainly the most difficult um, ever. I never want to repeat that. Um, Very dark. So, but she came and it was pretty good. The life there was a lot slower. Um, but anyway, that was May 5th. Why would I do such a thing? Because of the doctrines. Um, and frankly, one of the craziest, mm, strangest ones was what I think animated this whole situation, which was, oops, um, that one of the bizarre teachings is the great tribulation that we know Jesus said is three and a half years long. They taught it was only five months long. And not only that, but basically it could begin at any time. It's imminent. 
um, because Satan's arrival on the earth, which I do believe the Bible says still, um, but when he does arrive in their teachings, he will be the Antichrist himself. And when he does arrive, he will have only have five months, but they would constantly harp on, but it will probably be in May to September. Those five month period will be actually May to September. Uh, because that is what they call the season of the locust. So I took my, our arrival in Idaho in May, being that it happened in May, as a, as a sign of a potential one year head start on this satanic arrival and the start of the tribulation one year later. Um, it, the positive side of it was there's a lot of time for prayer. Okay. Uh, there was and, and solitude and we did that. Um, and while in prayer there, I heard from the Lord, um, something major would indeed occur in September of 2001, between the 5th and the 17th. So I totally, quickly, without further thought, took that as a total confirmation and vindication of not only my being there where I was, but the Shepherd's Chapel, period. And my new friend and his being right about everything, and my new role being there, whatever this ministry role would be, everything's vindicated. I'm so excited. Big mistake. Big mistake. Here's some of the other beliefs that I'm not... Exactly sure when I first heard them, but I knew they were around. And during this year, uh, prep time or whatever, um, I got familiar with. And I didn't think it was worth doing anything about because I heard from the Lord. Here's some of the other teachings that I didn't question. Cain, like Cain and Abel, Cain, it, this is not what we believe at End Time Church, folks, okay? Just don't, don't get it twisted. This is a culty Shepherd's Chapel teachings. Listen, I believe this stuff because the date was true, therefore all this must be true. Cain is the literal offspring of Satan. In the Garden of Eden, Satan had sex with Eve, produced Cain. And the sons of Cain are the ones who live in Israel today and call themselves Jews, but they are not and they are lying. He called them Kenites. The real Jews are actually Germans. Yeah. And the tribes of Israel were actually sent into Europe after the Assyrian captivity and became the white European nations. And those nations were led by the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, which we were told was the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and the United States. Therefore, when the Bible talks about Armageddon or the Battle of uh, Gog attacking Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39, I again remember it clear as day. There's a teaching tape on it that says Ezekiel 38 and 39 refers to Russia invading America through Alaska. And the Valley of Haman Gog, as you read in Ezekiel, is actually in Alaska itself. That's where the hordes of Gog will be buried. Nothing to do with Israel in the Middle East. It's America. Uh, another one was the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls are all the same events. They all correspond to each other, and five of them have already occurred In other words, we were told the first seal, the first trumpet, the first vial of God's wrath had already happened. And the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth. The one we're waiting for was the sixth because we were told the number 666 means the sixth seal, trumpet, and bowl. I'm not going to explain how wrong this all is. I don't think you need to hear that, but, and it's not over. He made a false prophecy, this pastor, in 
1979, clearly way before I had hooked up, most students did not do not know about this to this day. And certainly not when I was listening. It was like a one of these super, super secret things you didn't talk about. Um, in 1979, he made a false prophecy uh, that he excused and covered up that said Satan, the Antichrist, will arrive in 1981. He told that two years prior, he will arrive in 1981. But when he says that, and if you're teaching that the tribulation is only five months long, that means you're saying Jesus himself is returning that year. Um, will arrive in 1981, and he, there's a super weird, remember Mount St. Helens? The Mount St. Helens, the, the volcano in Washington State, that which is right uh, next to where I now lived in Idaho, um, it erupted, right? Very famous incident. And there's a picture. It's like one of these internet, you know, things that what can you see in the cloud? What figure can you see? They were convinced, this pastor convinced everyone that the a, a picture, one of the pictures of Mount St. Helens eruption, there's a face in the giant plume of smoke in one of these pictures, and the, not only did was there a face, but he knew who the face was of because he saw this man standing on a cloud in another vision. It was Elijah. It was the face of Elijah in Mount St. Helens. So that was warning us that you only have one year left. And here's a quote from the same teaching tape from Fizz. Quote, the book of Daniel very clearly states that it shall happen before the year 1981. If you have any understanding at all of the wisdom of the elect in the last days, quote. And that, by the way, that teaching tape was called Seed of the Serpent. And if you don't believe any of that, here's some links. You see the YouTube, this YouTube link actually plays that tape that I'm talking about, where he makes that prophecy. Um, and then some blogs and thing some of the stuff that he believes including more stuff that's crazy including that the trinity is not true denies the trinity saying jesus actually is the father and is the holy spirit so he's what you call a modalist that's a fancy word for or oneness okay and that's all good we know the father you know jesus and the father pray to be one like we are one Anyways, it's different than uh, what we're told in the Bible. Um, not only that, but we all, all, every person on the earth, all of you, pre-existed as angels before you were born. Yes, um, we were. All, we all existed before we were born as angels, and then now we get bodies. One of the less controversial ones was. People still understand, guys, this is not a cult of uh, charismatic circles. In fact, he was very opposed to the charismatic movement. Um, there was no speaking in tongues here. OK, he would. They were very Baptist Pharisee. OK, they were the Pharisee type of cult. Um, King James only King James only with the Strong's Concordance, which is not a bad concordance. In fact, it's used all over the world and it's pretty good. Um but that was the only thing you were allowed to use. Don't use another concordance. Don't use another version of the Bible because they're all corrupt and evil and from the devil. Um, and the like, the official textbook, if you will, uh, of the King James text with the you know the Strong's uh, tie-ins was called the Companion Bible by Bullinger, which of course I was a good little cult member. I have a copy. Uh, everyone had to buy one. Um, it's actually not a bad Bible overall. It's just it's got some weird notes in it, tons and tons of appendixes with some really, really bizarre teachings in it. Uh, but he um, bought into all that. And because the, the editor, Bullinger, who made the Companion Bible, um, is one of these guys who thought the Great Britain and the United States were the, of the tribes of Israel. Uh, and finally, again, not super, super weird, but he taught that the beast, the first beast of Revelation 13 uh, was quote one worldism, one worldism, and that the deadly wound that you see to one of the heads in that chapter is actually brought about by the elect, quote unquote, causing the wound. 
Now, I don't know. I never dug into that, what that meant, but it sounds like a call to violence to me. Um, and of course, the elect or only Shepherd's Chapel members. You couldn't possibly be one without being one of his people. All right. The point of all that is, this is the stuff I believe. And I know I have some type of um, level of trust with you folks, hopefully, because I'm, I, I want you to understand why I am the way I am, uh, why I teach the scriptures the way I do, why I ask for, have such a high level of burden of proof, um, and why I go after teachings. Um, who are cultish. Speaking of bad actors, I'll take care of YouTube there for a second. Um, now here's what you ha- here's what happened with me and what happened with Shepherd's Chapel people who have left and with all cults follow this pattern, uh, which is when you question anything, you see the same phrases and justifications over and over and over. I mean, literally the same words. I can tell you, and because it's happened a lot on Twitter uh, or Facebook, but usually on Twitter, I can tell, I can identify a Shepherd's Chapel student a mile away just based on one sentence. I guarantee you that they are. And every time it's right. Not because I'm smart, but because I used to say that stuff. There are certain buzzwords that you use every time. There are certain scriptures you reference every time. There are certain ways you deal with attacks and opposition every time. Uh, if you do dare to disagree or to come out and say, maybe this isn't, you know, are we sure about this? You're castigated. You're viewed, viewed with suspicion. And then blacklisted. Um, again, not unique to this situation, um, but it, it happened to me. Blacklisted, right? Oh, you can't trust him anymore. Oh, don't kick him off the channel. Get him out of here. Uh, whatever. I'm just trying to understand, honestly. Like, I'm not even opposed to the to the church or anything. I'm still, like, a member, but I'm just questioning stuff. And doubting the dear leader is always viewed as disloyalty. Disloyalty. Not See, this is what happens. The truth factor goes away. Nobody really even cares if it's, if it's true anymore. You say, are you, are you disrespecting the leader? Are you being disloyal? I, loyalty is like, instead of truth matters, it's elevated into uh, elevating a man over God. Disloyalty. Loyalty. Um, and of course you get, you made friends. Well, not anymore. Now they're your enemies. You're fraying all these relationships. There's no chance that you're going to be buddies with the Shepherd's Chapel people after you do this. So that all hurt, you know, that kind of stunk. Um, but that certainly wasn't the worst of it. So here's the bad part. But the point is, I fell for this stuff. Number one, that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. As a as a student, as a you know exegete, I'm extremely ashamed that I would uh, fall for this. But again, here's now. Listen, I'm God did speak to me during this whole time. It was basically one thing, which was something major will occur between September 5th and 17th, 2001. Because that's what I was looking for. That's what I was praying into. Will something occur? And they, the answer came yes between the 5th and 17th. Well, what's the 15th? The, the 5th and 17th is a 13-day range of dates. If you take the exact center of it, the between September 11th. This was in um, you know mid to late summer, early fall, maybe. I say the summer of 2000 that I heard this. So God told me about 9-11 over a year in advance. But I wasn't listening because I was in a cult. And that took precedent. Pleasing the fear of man 
took precedent over the fear of God. Being accepted in this group took precedent over being accepted by God and doing what he really said and preparing for what he's really telling, what the Spirit was really saying. He wasn't talking about Kenites being fake Jews or the United States being invaded by Russia. He was talking about what was coming that would change the world. And, I mean, I believe in destiny and and I'm literally going to not try to blow my mind away thinking about things that could have been. But what if I just listened to that at face value and prayed into that and got the real deal? Because there were, I mean, you know, uh, on a normal day in this quote unquote ministry that we had, excuse me, that we had, I'm looking at, oh, Israel there. Yeah, they just, I know there's a seven year covenant and the second intifada happened in 2000, which was seven years after the Oslo Accords in 1993. This has got to be it. I'm looking at the, uh, um, the flare up with uh, Saddam Hussein now in Iraq. And I know Iraq is part of this, and there's some, the inklings, the, the germination, the seeds of what would, could become what my focus in the years to come, which was the fact that yes, Iraq, Iran, and Turkey, and Syria, and Syria, I knew for a fact this was an important central player, but we weren't talking about this in separate Shepherd's Chapel. But then I was watching the things in, in, in Iraq with great interest. So I, God had me set up for this. I blew it. Then the big bomb dropped sometime in 2000. Um, but yet I stayed in. What was the big bomb? The friend who I went out there to live with, and for a time we did live in that house. I mean, not long, but there was an apartment that we got set up. It was very, God took care of me, okay? He took care of us and, you know, my wife now, um, and my brother, and uh, he's just so gracious, even in that scenario, which is wonderful. But um, we hung out at a friend's house every single day. We ate every meal there. Okay, like the big bomb was he was one of the two witnesses. He just knew it. And I was the other one because I actually came out and was obedient or whatever. Not sure why. Uh, but I was the other one. And that wasn't the end of the bombing because not only was were we the two witnesses, but he was the senior officer. He was the senior officer. Uh, meaning my senior officer. And so I had to follow his lead at all times. I had to be like a super disciple. Everything he did, I had to emulate everything. He said I had to believe. Don't get me wrong. This man was a nice person. Okay? He wasn't cruel or weird in that way. Uh, there was no illegal stuff happening. Um, but at the same time, what I'm saying is true. Okay, that wasn't the end because not only is he the senior officer in these in this two-witness scenario, two-witnesses scenario, um, but it turns out... That, you know how we read in the end of Revelation how, uh, or in Paul when the millennium is over that Jesus will hand the kingdom back to the Father, right? Give everything back to the Father. His interpretation and teaching on that was I still remember getting told this and my inside was shaking in rage. But I didn't do anything. Um, what Jesus would hand it back to the Father, that means everything starts again. And the great revelation of Pastor Murray, and how great of a teacher he is, he's really Elijah, okay, is because, yes, you exist before the world is even created, and then you're born into the flesh, 
But now he's saying, but then it starts over. And the next time I, Chris, Manti, will be the senior of the two witnesses and get a promotion, basically. And then he will go to the cross. And then he was always making subtle little jokes about that. Oh, wait till next time. And then it'll be your turn. How, how could I even stomach that? But what happened? I, I didn't do anything. It literally made me ill, but I stayed in because the spirit I don't know what's the spirit if you're in agreement with the evil spirits you're in agreement with the devil um, and you're, you're being manipulated and all that stuff this is what happens now the real test though I knew I knew so 2000 is is Proceeding and there's signs that I'm seeing everywhere and this is this is it. Now I've got the big bomb dropped in me. Like, you know what? I'm not I'm not really comfortable with this part. Um, but we're gonna see. Cause now there's a date on it. The months go by and obviously there's no tribulation starting, so now it's May. So we know we've targeted this, we've been thinking and praying about it, and we're told by Shepherd's Chapel, May fifth through seventeenth is the date. So the real test would be May 17th, 2001. Then we would know for sure, right? That's the deadline. That's the deadline. It's like, oh, I don't know, some kind of thing that happened with an election these couple months ago where you had a deadline. And if it didn't happen by that deadline, then you knew it was a bunch of crap. So this is the real test, the deadline for Satan to arrive and the Great Tribulation to begin. Needless to say, it did not. And um, when it did not occur, I cried many tears, and I can't even really, maybe you can imagine the all the feelings that uh, emotions that sprung up from that, how stupid I felt, how shamed I was, how what a, what a disgrace this whole situation was. Not just to me, not just to my family, not just to my fiancé, but my Lord. How could he bear to look at me after what I've participated in and believed and wasted my life? Um, so after this date, I went back to my buddy and basically demanded an apology. I don't know if that was the right way to do it. Probably wasn't, but that's what I did. I said, look, dude, we were just, we have to admit we were wrong. Um, yes, I wanted him to apologize to me, but also that we would apologize to those who we we misled. And that's a whole nother uh, dimension of this. When you're in a cult, you're misleading others. You can't just say, well, you know, this isn't David Koresh where you go, you go to live with a guy and he burns the place down where you're living in, in the commune. It wasn't to that level, but at the same time, nobody was really being deceived by David Koresh other than his little group. But guys, Shepherd's Chapel reached millions. Do you know how much they brought in? I found out today. They were bringing in $75,000 a month just for TV fees. In other words, just to get the satellite feed onto... They were in every major market in America except for New York City. $75,000 just to pay, just to break even on TV costs. And they were making it just fine. A month. <laughs> Uh, the point is, deception breeds deception, breeds deception, breeds deception. 
and sharing things like this, uh, even though you think it's innocent, it's not. Look at your, your, you know, in that case, we're misdirecting funds and time and, and, and work and prayer to a useless cult than to the real gospel. We're busy telling people the people in Israel are, are sons of Satan. Literally, not even spiritually speaking. Actually, they're the children of the devil. And we believe they call them Kenites. And you watch over the Kenites in your town who try to tell you they're Jews. Here's the what ticked me off, though, about his refusing to apologize. You just can't see it, he said. It actually did happen. It actually happened, you see. You just don't have the faith. Have you heard that lately? You just don't have the faith to see that it's really happened. He's going to reveal himself soon. He's here. That was it for me. Everything is on schedule, you see. We just couldn't see it. This is the lie of spiritualizing false prophecy. This is why I am so angry. Yes, I'm angry. I am angry. Because lies like this hurt the children of God. And I think it put souls in jeopardy of hell. If Arnold Murray is in heaven, it's because of the grace of God. Extreme grace. This is the last straw for me. Spiritualizing false prophecy it was a lesson in wisdom that the, the real, the true Jesus drilled into me. Don't ever forget this, son. Don't ever forget this. I'm going to use you in this. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt those of you tell, but you got to tell them. Um, um, so I made plans uh, immediately to move. Get the hell out of there. Um, we went apartment and job hunting from 3,000 miles away uh, to get back to our families and friends that we uh, abandoned back in either New Jersey or Delaware or Pennsylvania, somewhere in there. And God even told me, by the way, where to move. I'll, I'll leave that one out for privacy's sake. Um, my fiance, uh, again, a grace of God. She was actually obviously very sad and nervous, um, at what was happening, but also because she actually learned to love, to live there. <laughs> she liked it. The pace of life she thought she would hate. She loved it. The, the, the majesty of the, the beauty of the, uh, um, landscape and the, the, this is the, you know, the Rocky Mountains are nearby. I mean, it, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, so she was actually kind of sad, but we had to go. And then finally, now this is 9-11. We've gone through May with it not happening, and now I'm in the dumps. And now that time that I thought was nothing was going to happen, 9-11 happened on TV, and we watched from Idaho apartment and the the, cr the amount of crushing in my soul uh, was indescribable. It's like, Father, you told me that. And I wasted this time. I didn't redeem the time. I wasted your time. And um, who knows who I could have hurt. My Dark Night of the Soul uh, began September 11, 2001. Um, 
what does that mean? Dark Knight of the Soul. If you don't, we can talk about it later. It's a, it's a phenomenon that um, many Christians have used that phrase to describe when stuff like this happens. You, you get dejected. You, I mean, totally. If it wasn't for Jesus, you'd commit suicide immediately. Um, you don't want to have anything to do with the with the Lord. You want to have nothing to do with your previous life. You want to run away and hide, and and absolutely just in shame crawl away and never be heard from again. That's what that's what it was. Um, so by 2002, we moved back east. But I shunned, as I said, I could not, do not talk to me about ministry, do not talk to me about a church. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a fool. I don't know how to interpret the Bible. I don't know what's real anymore. Forget it. Let's just be a normal person. Got a real job. Although, he's starting over from scratch because we left the previous job behind, right, years before. Um, and finally, in 2005, I got a a decent job at AT&T, as you all know. Planned our wedding, got married, had our two sons. Um, and then these giftings that were still there, right? This desire that was still there that God planted in me and that and that the, the secular work was trying to fill, right? With with um, uh, getting folks together, connecting them, uh, um, uh, um, whatever. Doing the talent that he gave me now in secular work, and said, so, "You know what? This isn't just right. I'm going to pour myself into something that's kind of similar to re- to religion, but it's it has a real world impact. And I know dates are going to happen. I know when elections are going to happen. So let's go into politics. I poured all my gift things into politics, going all in and uh, the 2008 cycle to 2012, to the presidential, the congressional, local elections, governors, everything. You all know that part of my story, probably." Um, I worked on three different presidential campaigns. Um, I was a state leader for two of them, and I got um, hired when I – hired in quotes – as uh, the campaign manager for the Republican United States Senate candidate in the 2012 election for my state. <sighs> Poured into it. Put, met so many great friends, yada, yada, but that's what I did. I ran – I was Jonah. I ran away. Oh, but then thank God, uh, he gave me one more chance. I think as uh, Pastor Anderson saying earlier tonight, uh, he gave me another chance and called me out. Um, I called me out on the carpet, really, on election night 2012, when again, a great disappointment, um, a great shame, a great waste of my life was now flashing before my eyes. And oh God, not again. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm doing. He came to me and spoke and said, do you work for me now or not? Stop serving these idols. And so he called me out that night. Um, and out of my resistance, he called me out of that realm and out of my resistance to ministry. So I took a a new tack to it all, which is instead of being right or being known or being some crazy elect person, I just want to serve. And uh, Christmas 2012, right after that election, we decided as a family to go to a local church as a family and see what God would do there. And I've been serving there ever since. It's called Iron Faith Fellowship today. And then eight months later, we launched, launched Wings of the Eagle. And uh, as you all know, probably, or not many of you, I went full-time as of 2018. But unfortunately, um, dealing with cults and their consequences, fortunately, is not over. Um, I love the folks who are caught up in them. But I have zero tolerance uh, for their lies, for the cult's lies, um, and their lies in the church. It grieves God.
it grieves him. And I think I felt what he allowed me to experience was to feel his heart through that and the extreme need that, yes, I do need him. Yes, I'm a fool without him. Yes, I'm a failure. Um, but he'll get you out if you come back. If you're willing to listen and actually process and serve and be serious about the things that he commands us to do, then he's wonderful. But again, my tolerance level is at zero. And I, I, I've i never had one millisecond in the last 20 years. Now this 20 year anniversary. I was a 25 year old. I, I think it was Taryn who made a comment earlier who's typing right this second. <laughs> I'm looking at the website. Um, she said about how cults can take, you know, the, the zeal uh, and the, you know, the on fire faith of a young Christian and exploit it. I agree with that uh, clearly, but I was a 25 year old man. Yes. I mean, 25 year olds probably go, oh, they're just kids. Okay. But no, I don't. I didn't have that excuse of being an eighteen-year-old, or not no, wet behind the ears, just in high school or something. Um, I should have known. Um, and f- finally, like I said, unfortunately, uh, this this trend is continuing. So not does did not die with the Shepherd's Chapel. By the way, Shepherd's Chapel is still around, and I'm not sure how much it's raking in uh, cash or or uh, students, but they're still around. Um, but there's many more popular ones now, ones that are very deceiving indeed. Um, and so when things like this happen to the to the folks that I'm called to serve people that I know, ministries that I uh, have been led to, have God has said, make friends with this person. You know, you want to you know, work with them, um, connect with them, connect them with others, whatever the case, and friends and dear brothers and sisters. But just in this past year, forget 20 years ago, just in the past 12 months, six months really, um, just applying this wisdom from my past experience, confronting the same tactics when I see it in QAnon, when I see it in the MAGA movement, I'm sorry if this ticks you off, but it's true. The MAGA folks, the FAI stuff. This is the same tactics. And yes, they've brought painful consequences um, to my walk to my relationships um to ministry at a certain level i i absolutely hate it and i i wish this had never happened to me um but i also wish i also wish um folks would know or at least understand why. Why I would why I would say anything? Why would I be so passion, passionate about this? Why would I care? None of my business, right? I wish someone had come to me 20 years ago, took my hand, took me under their wing and said, look, uh, you're in a real heap of trouble. You're believing a whole bunch of lies and you're spreading a whole bunch of lies and you're getting people to trust you who are never going to trust you again. And you're mishandling God's word and God is not okay with it. And if you don't repent, he's going to hold you to a very extreme standard you will not be able to meet. Um. So if at any point in the past few months, this this attitude of 
you know, coming at these groups or these lies or these memes of, you know, in our current age, the way, to, the way it goes, um, that are deceiving and deceiving other Christians and deceiving the Christians in my churches. And when I say, I mean, Iron Faith or End Time Church, the folks in my sphere of influence, all of a sudden they disappear because they can't, they think I'm some kind of turncoat or, or uh, disloyal or something. I certainly don't know it all. I, I definitely don't do it the right way all the time. I, clearly, clearly, God forgive me, uh, brothers and sisters to forgive me um, if I've come across in certain ways that are wrong um, or that I know, know everything. I know I don't. Ask my wife. She'll tell you how much I don't know and how wrong I get it constantly. But it's only by God's grace in Jesus that I can even speak on this stuff now. That's the truth. I never want to talk about it. I don't want people to know about it. My flesh doesn't want you to know about this at all because it will discredit me. That's what I'm afraid of, right? Why listen to him? He's a, he's a loony too, and he believes all this terrible stuff and misled people. Why? He's not even worth it. You know, why Why even fellowship with this guy? Why li- forget le- learning? Learning, listen, you know, Bible stuff from him? Forget it. I've been told that. I'm the worst teacher influenced by Satan ever because when I speak out about the culty stuff. So I would just ask you to pray for me um, and and all because this my cult experience <clears throat> is very mild compared to a lot of <clears throat> folks who are really in, in this deep. Um, and I'm just talking about Christian cults, right? I want to use the a regular looking church or pastor or um, whatever to meet their ends. But pray for all who have been de- deceived by these things. Um, and please extend grace and a helping hand with them and with me. Um, and I'll do the same to the best of my ability. Uh, amen. And that is I don't even know what time it is. Probably way too late. I apologize. Um, But that's my story. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Hey, Chris, did you want to come on, buddy? It's up to you. Oh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, be here. And, uh, you know, that's your story and you're sticking to it. And uh, <laughs> I got you know, it, it, it's very interesting because the reality of it is there are so many Christian cults out there that we, we don't even recognize. We think of the, the top two Jehovah's Witness and mm-hmm. uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Mormons, yeah. We think of all that stuff and we're like, OK, these these are the top two. But there are so many other small, minute ones and they and they grab you in such an easy way, as you described. You know, it started off with these people, the only only ones that are teaching a post-trib. The only thing that seemed right, and that one truth sucked you in. So it's, mm-hmm. it's measures of truth mixed with measures of falsehood, which come along later on once you're already hooked into the group. And, um, you know, sometimes it's very hard to see past some of those things. Um, many of us here tonight, myself included, want to give the benefit of the doubt to people of the goodness of their heart or where their intentions are. And, um, you know, oftentimes that will come back and bite us. And that's probably even more so the case when it comes to these cults that are out there. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I appreciate you big time, PA. Um, I'm sorry. I saw a question here on YouTube. Uh, I did want to look at real quick. Uh, Gene. So what do you think the law was the Lord's purpose in revealing to you that something was going to happen September, 2001? Um, I don't know the full answer to that. Uh, I just know he was trying to warn me or to use me to tell folks what was coming. I don't know what that would have done. I don't know you know, what practical effect it would have had or launched, you know, something that he wanted me to, you know, get on this particular track or this 
train of, of life and, and get to where I need, I want you to be type of thing. I, I don't, I don't really know, but um, to me, it, uh, you know, in hindsight, uh, it was clear that I should have used that information in a different or productive way. Hope that helped you. Uh, and then Ceci, which is the um, feel good uh, sister. Uh, it was all his plan. You went through that for such a time as this. Now I can't disagree with that. And you know, this is what I counsel folks. Um, most times who have similar situations is it's not out of, you know, God's providence um, in that you went through this, especially if you were you know, doing as you understood it, your best and, and you weren't, you know, intentionally deceiving anyone. You weren't intentionally, um, you know, disobeying the Lord. Um, he will work that out for our good, like scripture tells us. Um, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I, I just want to throw in there, but you always want to exercise your discernment. And you, you always want to say, Holy Spirit, take the wheel here. I, this is not, something's not right. You know, um, like the big bomb I was saying uh, in there, that was my, that was my last warning. The Lord's like, dude, get out, you know, um, this is crazy. You must leave. Um, just so obey that, you know, when, when those things come up, just to always be cognizant of that because God does, it's like he, we pray deliver us from evil, the evil one and lead us not into temptation. So he won't do that. He says God doesn't tempt anyone. Um, so he won't lead us into evil situations where we're doing anti God stuff. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, Yes, definitely. Uh, it's all part of the plan. He will use it. So I just have settled on that. If you know what I mean, I've settled on. Um, yes, he will use it for your good, and will turn it around and get you, if you know, if we can, back on the original track, or we'll give you an alternate track. This is what I've uh, basically settled on in my mind, which is, you know, he'll he'll put you on the the backup plan for yourself uh if you don't proceed um so yes but it does it does help a little bit to know that he was there and he certainly he certainly was yeah all right i think that's oh who is this marie uh how sh- how should you feel about someone who gets salvation right but everything else doctrinally related wrong and well, that's kind of what we're talking about with the Jehovah's Witnesses or something. Uh, but even that, well, anyways, uh, any, everything else wrong. I knew a woman um, called a religious sister never came out of the Catholic Church. That's, I mean, phew, so did I. Okay, uh, I mean that's where I was raised, and I, I'm, I'm not. I don't like to make blanket statements like that because yeah, their doctrine, a lot of it is bizarre and and wrong. Um, but not all of it. I mean, the core stuff is is solid, and I think you you can live your life in that church and be born again and be saved. Um, you probably can't be too serious about it if if you stay. That's just my opinion. But um, I wouldn't be. T- I would just pray for her if you know someone in that situation and just talk um, frequently. You know, make, build that friendship and that trust and and when if and when you know things come up in life whether they be pro- big prophetic events or just the, the things of the storms of life um that she would see you know the, the lord in you and to understand that some of these things that maybe she believes aren't aren't really kosher and maybe we need to think about it and do that so okay. I'd like to maybe add a little bit to that so the yeah. from what i'm reading here she gets salvation right now by getting salvation right, we're, I think we're of the base understanding that she believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She confesses him with his mouth, as we see in the book of Romans and what we should do. Um, it's not just saying a sinner's prayer moving on, but it's somebody who has given their life to Christ and has made herself the disciple of Christ. Now, when we're talking about getting everything doctrinally wrong, it seems like that might be a blanket statement that she's getting everything doctrinally wrong. But the reality of it is, is this in the Protestant church, there's something like 30,000, if I'm not mistaken, Pastor Manti, denominations. 
And I would venture to tell you there's probably about 30,000 people saying that other 30,000 groups are wrong. You know, Protestants mm-hmm. look at Catholics and say Catholics got it all doctrinally wrong. Catholics look at the Greek Orthodox and say they probably got it all wrong. They got it all wrong. Everybody's got it wrong but yourself. And that is a danger, Amen. I think, it, across the board. It doesn't matter if, what it is. If you're looking at somebody else and saying they got it all wrong and you have no scriptural validity to back it up, that's a danger. I think that's a sign of a cult as well, something we're talking about. But if it is found in the Bible— and the 66 books of the Bible, I just threw mine on the floor on accident. The 66 Here's books one. of the Bible, there you go, there's one. If it's found in there, you can trust it. You can put your faith in it, that it's right. And I, and I'm, what I'm talking about is the plain reading of the word. So not taking it and trying to extrapolate something and make a particular sound bite of Scripture, a verse, fit your own ideology – but you let the word of God in its entirety shape the doctrine that, that you believe. Now, there is a process we all go through called sanctification. This is, the, this is where we as believers co-labor with the Holy Spirit to become more and more like Christ in our daily life. It means we don't all have it right. It means we're not perfect. And so... Understanding the foundational truths of salvation is priority number one, and then working and co-laboring with Holy Spirit as he reveals the word of God to you and as it is plainly delivered, and then allowing that to convict your heart to change you so that your life reflects scripture. That right there is what I would loosely call doctrinally sound. You know, that would be my loose definition of that. Mm-hmm. So if the person believes in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, confesses it with her mouth, and she is living for Christ, it's not just a, a mouth thing. It's not just saying a few words and moving on with your life. If she does that, then by nature of the new conversion, the new birth, she should begin to produce fruits of the spirit that we see in Scripture. Um so big question I would have at this point is, are you sure she has salvation right? If you're not following scripture, if that's totally off. So there's some definitely some investigation to do in there, but we have to understand what salvation is at the beginning. She believes in a rosary. Yeah, I used, I used to have that. I had a, I had a nice set of uh, rosary beads. Uh, yeah, you pray your Hail Marys and our fathers on it. I remember that thing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm all, I'm all the way up to confirmation level Catholic, okay? I'm an official, whatever, 15 year old. Uh, the Catholic school for first grade. Mm, oh, my, yeah. I have, I've been spanked by nuns and had my hands hit with rulers and. I never got touched. I don't know whether I was just a good boy or something like that, but, uh. My mama was know. a secretary at the, at the school, so she just let them have the way. If I was getting out of line, she'd say, get them. That's pretty yeah. sweet deal, actually, as a parent. Uh, <laughs> you take care of that, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, I was at Catholic, uh, school from kindergarten through, um, through sixth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And this, this whole experience that I just related to you was kind of like the end of that journey, you know, and I was coming out of the kind of transitioning out of that. I knew that really wasn't right. And then you go to the library and check out all the rapture books, like that whole you discovery, whatever you want to call it, period. And that's when the, I got sucked into that thing. Anyway, yeah, be careful. Uh, so, so because she prays her rosary, do you believe she lost her salvation? That right there, I think, is a foundational question to ask. I don't care if you're Catholic, Protestant, mm-hmm. or uh, Orthodox. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've confessed him to the world, and you are trying your best to live for him, and it's not just lip service, right. then does praying the rosary or belief in the rosary counteract her salvation? That is a question that you probably ought to need to ask at that at that point. God is very gracious. That's what I know. Amen. If, if if you fulfill what you need, you know, right? If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, God raised it from the dead, you shall be saved, period. Anyways, yeah, man. Uh, we'll pray for you, uh, Murray. Um, 
you know, something about the NAR church. I mean, that's kind of a misnomer, I think. There's not really not a particular denomination called that, but there's that, there's that little culty, uh, group called the NAR. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang out with them personally. <laughs> Isaac is cautioning the same. So I agree with Isaac. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's getting late, brother. Let's get out of here. Um, Sounds like we just had our after party. Yeah, we did. <clears throat> it's good. So, friends, thank you um, for putting up with me in this. I know it's not, uh, you know, the typical, typical Manti session um, teaching-wise, but uh, I do think it needs to be said. And, it, you know, it's very just impactful for me to realize this was, the, this was the date and, like, oh, my gosh, it's been 20 years. And it's just a big date in my, uh, like I said, my walk with, with God and um, my brothers and sisters and to get some maturity the hard way. So bless you for putting up with me in that. And thank you, PA. Welcome home, by the way, from yeah, VK. You. You're looking svelte and a little sunburn. It's good. Yeah, well, not as bad as it was. That's, I'm starting to peel on my shoulders now, finally. That's great. We can, Maybe the after after party, we can see that. Yeah, you know. If someone can because I'm not. Pieces of skin for you. you know? That's not good. All right. Hey, brother. I love you, man. And uh, all all y'all as well. God willing, we'll be back here uh, next Monday night to do it again, uh, which is worship God again, which is thank him for being who he is uh, and always being himself and never changing yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, so we thank him for being him and for you for being here. And we love you uh, and we bless you. May you be have the shalom of God rest upon you in this uh, period of Shavuot. And um, Holy Spirit, indeed, we need you more than ever. Love you all. Till next time.